Hey everybody, what is up? Welcome to the fourth episode of how to improve your first person shooter skills. In the previous episode we went about the performance that you had in game and how it affects your inputs and that it can cause you input lag and other stuttering and etc. So, you know, I feel that we covered the very basics of everything that you need to know in order to really start practicing your aiming skills, which is one of the most, if not the most important thing in first person shooters. For example, when I, when I was a team captain in Counter-Strike back in the competitive days, I would always say to my players, if you're gonna get killed, do as much damage as possible so that you can even things a little bit. In a 5 versus 5 situation, if you're defending a bomb site and the enemies are advancing and they're gonna kill you, they are, you have three options that I'm gonna be happy with, some better than others. You make them waste all their grenades so that they don't have uh, much grenades left therefore they cannot counter grenade when we are trying to retake the bomb site or we leave you leave at least one guy almost dead like with really low health points like it just enough to get shot shoot one time um, and get killed even if it's in the foot you know or you can take down at least one guy with you so it's again you lose but it's four versus four and in those two seconds when you realize that you're gonna get killed, that there's no other way around it, the only thing you can really count on is your aim. How fast can you aim, how accurate can you aim, and how good can you control the recoil in order to do as much damage as possible in under two seconds. And usually, I'd say that there are three types of aiming. Um, because, uh, for example, in games that have really, really high time to kill, such as quake granted that you don't have any high damage weapon nor the quad damage you're gonna have to hit the enemies a lot of times so you cannot afford to waste any bullets so you need to have a perfect lock on aiming skill to um, you know to perform good in a game such as quake almost like a name bot really all the crosshair must always follow the target no matter where he is and of course then you have other two different aiming methods you have the twitch Twitch skill aiming methods and then you have the accurate aiming. I can give you various examples, I mean Call of Duty, Counter Strike and Battlefield are games that fit somewhere in those uh, two different types of aiming, the Twitch and the accurate aiming. Call, Call of Duty it's on the very end of the spectrum of the Twitch skill, it's as twitchy as possible and then you have Counter Strike which is as accurate as possible because headshots are really 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 rewarded and then we have Battlefield that is in between both Call of Duty and Counter Strike and the reason being is because Counter Strike really rewards headshots and Call of Duty on the other hand does not reward headshots and I've put this little graphic here so to illustrate my point of view in Call of Duty you have um, the same weapon for Call of Duty and the same weapon for Battlefield Battlefield is on the right Call of Duty is on the left and you see that the time to kill in Call of Duty is considerably smaller or shorter than the Battlefield version. Why? Because one bullet of the same weapon in Call of Duty gives 49 damage and in Battlefield it gives 25. So in Call of Duty one bullet takes half the health more or less and in Battlefield it takes one quarter of your health. This is why it takes more time to kill in Battlefield because bullets don't give as much damage as in Call of Duty. And not only that, but Call of Duty oh, not the, doesn't really reward headshots. If you see the multiplier, it's 1.4. And in Battlefield it's not here, but, but I know this for a fact and there are statistics to prove it. The multiplier is 2.0 if you hit the head. So 2.0 on Battlefield and 1.4 in Call of Duty. So that makes the game not really reward headshots. And Call of Duty right here as you see, it you only you have interest in hitting any of these parts of the body from po top to bottom. And in Counter-Strike, I'm not going to talk about Battlefield right now, but I'm going to be talking about Counter-Strike. It's quite the opposite. Counter-Strike really rewards headshots. So you really need to aim for the head. Now what's the difference for these two? Well, on the left you only need twitch skills because you don't need to really be accurate as long as your crosshair is somewhere around here you're gonna be good but in counter-strike if you consider yourself a serious player every time you try and kill someone your crosshair is gonna be here you're gonna aim for the head the entire time as you can see it's way way harder to hit the head 
than the entire body. Just look at the difference. It's a tiny circle. And in Call of Duty, it's a huge, like, ball, you know? So, in Call of Duty, uh, I mean, in Counter-Strike, you really have to, to practice that aim for the head. And in Battlefield, it, it's rewarded. So, my advice is, and, and I've proven, I mean, this is more a personal taste, but what I used to do in uh, Battlefield games, I would go to Counter-Strike first, warm up before I had a, 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 an esports match on either of um, the battlefields that I played on a competitive level, I would go to Counter-Strike, practice my aim on a aim map, then go to Battlefield and hit the head the whole time. Because the mindset is going to be the same. And you're going to port what you have been uh, practicing over the last half an hour, you're going to port it to Battlefield and you're going to get better performance. It's a really good way to practice that in uh, for Battlefield, especially because there's no custom maps in Battlefield and there's no custom servers that allow headshot only. Um, so that's that's the reason. If, if Battlefield would allow that, there would be no point for you to play um, Counter-Strike. But there are other ways you can practice. There's this website called aim400kg.ru. I'm going to put the link in the description. That has You can practice different types of aiming. You can practice accuracy, reflex, and quickness. Obvious, obviously, reflex is for Call of Duty, where you got to react as fast as possible when the dot in the center changes colors you got to click as fast as possible so that you know y you practice your reaction times but of course that this isn't um something that you should practice the entire time this is just a perk like if you if you're away from your gaming computer and you are on a crappy laptop and or if you are at work and you have nothing to do and you feel like practicing your, your skills a little bit then by all means hit uh, hit the link in the description and go to this website and practice. Now, bear in mind that I am a 29 year old guy and I'm talking uh, at the same time that I'm doing this, so my reflexes aren't really that good. But I mean, any good player will have uh, under a 200 millisecond uh, delay time when you are, you know, doing this, but you know, it doesn't really matter. And then you have the exact aiming, which basically got, makes you shoot against balloons that appear in different parts of the uh, the screen. Now the disadvantage of this is that since this is a, a really tiny window it's hard for you to practice as if you were in game but it still holds some value and you can still practice stuff that can later on be ported to your in-game performance definitely. Um, so again this is just a, a small advice it, it's something that when I, you know when I was a student and I really was playing Counter Strike on a really hard competitive level, I would practice this almost every day to get my reflexes going. And you know what? It worked, guys. It really worked. So I suggest you do the same if you're uh, interested in you know getting your better reflexes, etc. And of course, then you have the exact aiming, which is more for this one is more towards Quake because you see. You, have to keep, you don't have to click, you just have to follow the ball around. As long as it's red, you're doing good. Um, so again, this, this one is good for games such as Quake Live, for example. But there you go, guys. That's my quick, quick tip for today. Um, your aiming is one of the things that matter the most. Now, if you combine accurate aiming with Twitch skills, and if you are a player that really aims for the head and is successful by doing so, then you almost have everything that you know there there needs to be for um, that you need to have to be a, a good player. The next thing that we're going to talk about is how to control your weapon recoil, and that's going to be more focused on battlefield. So if you're playing any other game, I'm sorry, it will still apply more or less. But the next episode is going to be ported more towards Battlefield and the next one is going to be even more about Battlefield, etc, etc. Et so I hope you guys enjoyed this quick episode. Uh, there isn't much I can say more, guys. Um, you know, it's just practice. It takes practice. You know your mouse settings, you know how you set, should set up things and you know what you should practice. So from now on, uh, there's not much... I can, I can say it's all about you now and how hard are you willing to practice. Thanks a lot for watching guys and I'll see you in the next episode. Cheers!